Thank you very much. All right, hello. My name is Christina Lippi. I'm a fourth year medical student from Penn State College of Medicine, located in Hershey, Pennsylvania, which actually happens to be my hometown as well. Has anyone here ever been to Hershey, Pennsylvania? Yeah, okay, good. All right, so for those of you that haven't been to Hershey, Pennsylvania, I just wanna let you know that the rumors are true. The uh, street lights are shaped like Hershey Kisses. Oh, it's not working, how did you make it? doesn't, it? you have to advance with the arrow keys. Oh, okay. All right, well, like I said, I am using that one. Okay, there we go. That worked. <laughs> so <laughs> the street lights are shaped like Hershey Kisses, both wrapped and unwrapped. The town does smell like they're chocolate. They're not made of chocolate. They're not made of chocolate. The town does smell like chocolate and it really is the sweetest place on earth. So this is the uh, graduating class last year for Penn State College of Medicine. So anyway, so you guys should come to Hershey if you haven't already. So my talk today is called Bilateral Acute Angle Closure Glaucoma Due to Oral Acetazolamide. And we'll begin with a case. A 63-year-old female presented to a clinic in Ecuador with chief, chief complaints of dizziness, foggy vision, bilateral ocular pain, and nausea. Her history of present illness. She is currently traveling to the Galapagos Islands with stops in Peru, Machu Picchu, and Ecuador. Before she went on her trip, she went to a local travel clinic where the physician there prescribed her oral acetazolamide for altitude sickness prophylaxis. She was instructed to take, start taking it three days before her trip, which she has. And then on the seventh day, she started to feel dizzy on this treatment. And within the next couple hours, her vision deteriorated to a white fog and she developed bilateral ocular pain and nausea. So her past medical history is significant for hypothyroidism, hyperlipidemia, and osteopenia. She only, her only ocular history is, my, she has myopia. Her family history is unknown, her social history was unknown, and the only medication she was on was simvastatin, synthroid, calcium, femur, and reclast. So they did an exam and they found that her intraocular pressure on the right was 61 and on the left it was 52. Her slit lamp exam showed bilater bilateral ciliary congestion, anterior chamber shallowing, corneal edema, unresponsive pupils, and visual diffuse visual defects, deficits. So they diagnosed her with bilateral acute angle closure glaucoma. For treatment, they gave her bilateral laser iridotomies. They also gave her IV mannitol and oral acetazolamide in order to try to decrease the intraocular pressure. They gave her paracetamol, which is an analgesic, so try to decrease her pain. They gave her timolol and dorazolamide drops to try to decrease the intraocular pressure. They gave her pilocarpine drops in order to try to constrict the pupil and break the acute angle closure attack. They also gave her penicillin acetate 1% um, drops in order to try to decrease the inflammation and they admitted her to the local hospital. So over the next couple days, and even after all this treatment, um, she did not get better. She still had really shallow anterior chamber angles, and she also still had really high pressure. So they advised her to come back home for further treatment. So she came back to Hershey, Pennsylvania, where she came to the Penn State Hershey Eye Clinic. And here, her intraocular pressure had decreased. The right and the left, it was um, noted to be 10. Her visual acuity was 20-25 in the right and 20-20 in the left. Her slit lamp exam still showed shallow anterior chambers in both eyes, and her gonioscopy exam showed narrows that were barely open to the trabecular meshwork. So at Penn State Eye Center, we diagnosed her with sulfonamide-induced bilateral acute angle closure glaucoma. So for treatment, we told her to discontinue her oral acetazolamide and, and stopped her topical timolol and dorazolamide drops. We had her continue on her prednisolone acetate uh, four times a day. We advised her to avoid acetazolamide and on all and all other sulfa medications. Um, and then we had her follow ups weekly and monthly and to see if she returned to her baseline. And on sub subsequent exams, her visual acuity did come back to baseline. She did develop her normal intraocular pressure, uh -oh. and she had deepening of her anterior chamber with wide open angles on gonioscopy. So the patient, yeah, sorry. Was she still on um, No, sorry, we stopped that too. Um, I'm not quite sure. Was 
So I think it was probably stopped at the same time because. I'm not quite sure the answer to that because I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the timeline and when each of the medications were stopped. I just know that our treatment was to uh, continue her prednisolone and to um, stop everything else. So I'm, I'm actually not quite sure. I think our thinking was the fact that, you know, she wasn't on pilocarpine initially when all this started. So, and looking at all her other medications that she's current, she was on, the only thing that really was added was the oral acetazolamide. So, that's the reason why we kind of thought it was fine. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about acute angle closure glaucoma a little bit. And as you know, it's an ocular emergency. If a patient comes in with acute angle closure glaucoma, you need to immediately figure out what is the cause of it and how to treat it. Um, because if you don't, the patient will develop complications and then therefore will have things like decreased visual acuity. So acute angle closure glaucoma can be due to a primary process or a secondary process. So a primary process is like if you had a predisposition to angle closure, which means, for example, you might have pre-existing um, an anatomy that causes um, shallow angles. Sec it could also be due to a secondary process such as medications, as in this case, emotional stress, and dim light. And depending on what's causing um, the acute angle closure glaucoma, the treatment differs. So I'm going to talk about the pathophysiology. So with acetazolamide-induced acute angle closure glaucoma, what happens is the salt alfonamide group is present, and this causes ciliary body edema, uveal fusions, and anterior choroidal effusions. This then leads to an anterior lateral rotation of the ciliary body, which then causes an anterior displacement of the iris lens diaphragm. And then the displacement of the iris lens diaphragm causes the shallowing of the anterior uh, chamber and therefore angle closure and therefore acute angle closure glaucoma. But with primary induced <coughs> acute angle closure glaucoma, the pathophysiology is different. It starts with pupillary block. And from the pupillary block, then prevents the aqueous humor from flowing between the posterior iris surface and the lens. And this resistance then causes a buildup of aqueous humor, causing the bowing of the iris anteriorly, and then causes the angle closure, leading to angle closure glaucoma. <coughs> so the pathophysiologies are different, but the clinical presentation of both of these are very, very similar. So both sulfa-induced and primary anchor closure glaucoma, the patient will come in with like red eyes, nausea, and bilateral ocular pain. On exam, you will see in both cases a bowed iris anteriorly, you will see a shallow anterior chamber, and you also see narrow angles on gonioscopy. So basically the physical exam is the same. The only really difference is that the sulfa induces acute angle closure glaucoma is presented bilaterally in both eyes. Well, usually in most cases of primary acute angle closure glaucoma is basically unilateral. So if a patient comes in with acute angle closure glaucoma into the emergency room, physician wants to notice if it's bilateral or unilateral, and it might give him an idea what the etiology is. So overall, it's the bilateral presentation that will help the <coughs> physicians determine that it might be a sulfonamide-induced <coughs> acute angle closure glaucoma. The bilateral presentation is what's key. So the pathophysiologies are different, and also the treatment's different. So in primary acute angle closure glaucoma, you want to treat with myotics, so you want to constrict the pupil. You can also treat with carbonic anhydrase inhibitors to decrease the intraocular pressure. Then you also want to treat with peripheral iridotomies in order to create a communication between the anterior and posterior chambers to allow the flow of the aqueous humor. But with sulfonamide-induced acute angle closure glaucoma, the treatment's different. The main thing you want to do is you want to discontinue the inciting uh, agent, so you want to stop that. You can also treat with midriatic. So the midriatic actually causes some ciliary body, uh, it causes the ciliary body to relax, and it also rotates the lens iris diaphragm posteriorly. If you remember, when I showed the pathophysiology, the sulfonamide causes the iris lens diaphragm to go anteriorly, so the midriatics can counteract this and bring it back posteriorly and help break the attack. With sulfonamide-induced acute <coughs> angle closure glaucoma, you also don't want to give myotics. They actually increase cilia ciliary body swelling and worsen the angle closure. So if you remember how we treated this patient, the main thing we do is we stopped the inciting agent, we stopped the acetylamide, um, and we gave her penicillin to decrease inflammation. We did not give her a midriatic. We felt like she was on the mend, and she um, was already breaking her attack, so we didn't think it was necessary to add another medication. We kind of just wanted to take everything away. So the importance of this case 
is it shows that acute angle closure glaucoma can be induced with just a low dose prophylaxis of altitude sickness, uh, a low dose of acetazolamide for um, prophylaxis of altitude sickness, which hadn't been described before, so that was a very interesting part of this case. The other thing that this case highlights is it really emphasizes the difference in the pathophysiologies between the primary and sulfa-induced acute angle closure glaucoma, which is really important because if you don't understand why the patient's having acute angle closure glaucoma, you're not going to be able to treat them correctly. And if you can't treat the patient correctly, they can have complications from acute angle closure glaucoma. So these are my references. And does anyone have any questions? Um, the last thing I just want to add is that after I'm done here, I'm actually going to Ghana with Unite for Sight, and I know a lot of people have done international stuff or been to Ghana and stuff like that. So if you have any advice for me, it's my first trip over, so if you have any advice, any stories, or anything you want to share to help me out and prepare me, um, here's my email. So I'd really appreciate any feedback. Just be really careful about what you eat. Okay. <laughs> That's what I told. <laughs> okay. I will keep that in mind. Make sure you get all your prophylaxis and show you appropriately. Yes. I have that. So, yeah, so yeah. It's, uh, it's serious stuff. I don't, I don't, my son went over and ended up getting Shigella. And he was so sick. Oh, that oh really? Okay. I will keep that stuff well, in mind. Okay. We sent a lot of people and they're fine. But okay. Listen, listen to what they say. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.